the Auburn Tigers. And who, what an off season it has been for Brian Harson. Obviously, we talked about it a lot on the show, but uh, but now it is time to talk actual football. What can we expect from Auburn this year? They went six and seven last year. Started out six and two. Lost their last five. They are number 100 in returning production. That is 55%. Uh, Still a lot of talent here, although it is spaced out into different segments of the team, right? Different positions have a ton more talent than others. Uh, Looking at the numbers from last year, the offense was not great, and a lot of that had to do with Bo Nix going down. But when it comes to it, I mean, the defense was great. Defense was really, really good under Derek Mason. Uh, The passing success was not awesome, but regardless, we'll get there. We'll start off with the offense here. Eric Keesaw was Harson's OC at Boise, but, you know, three offensive coordinator hires in one calendar year is not good. I mean, that just ain't good at all. The passing rate was 50.67%, number 30 in FBS, but the passing PPA was number 101. Why would you continue doing something that was not working? Rushing PPA was number 52, and yet rush rate was number 101. They could have leaned more, I think, on Tank Bigsby, etc. Some of those games that they lost, especially against South Carolina, etc., probably could have run the ball even more than you did. Uh, I would imagine this year they will lean on Tank Bigsby quite a bit, especially while quarterback gets settled. You got Zach Calzada, the transfer from A&M. You got TJ Finley, and then you got Robbie Ashford, who just outperformed everybody in spring, at least in the spring game. Um... But he was a backup at Oregon, and I would imagine he starts number three. I mean, who knows? You got five offensive linemen back with 350-plus snaps. You got uh, wide receivers here that don't exactly scare anybody, or at least have not to this point. But we'll see. I mean, obviously, kids have developed at the skill positions under Harson in the past at Boise. We'll see what happens. As far as the defense goes, new defense coordinator is Jeff Schmetting. He was the defense coordinator at Boise. So now you've basically got the entire Boise crew now down at Auburn. So we'll we'll see what that looks like. You lose the cornerbacks McCreary and Monday transfers and returning guys that should fill in pretty well uh, as far as that goes. Uh, you got six guys with 400 plus snaps. They're going to be playing. They weren't great last year. You got to imagine they'll be better than number 91 passing success rate this year. Defensive line loaded with defensive ends. You got Hall, Wooden, etc. Uh, 31 tackles for loss, 21 sacks last year. The linebackers. Eh, you do lose your leaders there in McLean and Wooten, and you got very little experience, but there's definitely talent. I mean, there is definitely talent when it comes to this. Uh, defense was number 10 in rushing PPA, but number 39 in passing PPA. That's what you got to clean up as the secondary. This team is a projected favorite in six games, and obviously early in the offseason, you look at this team and you're thinking, you know, this is a team that... I would imagine, uh, would have trouble making it to a bowl game. But it seems like, with everything that has come out of Auburn, it seems like everybody is kumbaya, everybody's pulling together, uh, maybe not the boosters, but certainly the players and the coaches. Everybody seems to be on the same page. Uh, keys to the season here, well, let's jump into win totals first. So win total six and a half. The over is plus 130, and the under is minus 160. I found that strange especially with the number of uh, home games that they've got. Conference odds, 125 to 1. Division odds, 80 to 1. Uh, there's only four road games, uh, but, you know, uh, yes, we talk about Auburn having a great home field advantage, etc. This team is only 3 and 4 straight up as a home underdog um, in the last, what, four years? Like, they don't, they're not in that position often, but I would expect them to be in that position quite a bit this year based on A&M coming to town, Arkansas coming to town, uh, Penn State, et cetera. Like it's, I expect some some rough stuff. Uh, they do play at Georgia. They do play at Alabama. I don't expect wins there, but regardless, um, does promoting two of his Boise staff does that help Parson? Does it make him more comfortable? Like is he is he happier doing it this way? Uh, was he doing things last season that he didn't want to do based on that coaching staff? I wouldn't imagine that there was anything going on defensively that he was upset about because Derek Mason, uh, I mean, he's the one that that got them to a bowl game last year. I mean, that defense was really, really good. Even with McCreary and Smoke Monday gone, the passing success rate allowed, or sorry, even with McCreary and Smoke Monday being there last year, the passing success rate, number 91, do you regress with new guys or can Schmetting fix this up? Can he fix what what their ailment was? 
The offense was not great last year, even with Bo Nix. Now they got to throw in Calzada and Ashford along with Finley. There's not a lot of optimism, but I think you can talk yourself into seven wins. I certainly did. I, I'm, I've got this team at seven and five. Uh, my loss is here, Penn State at Georgia, Arkansas at Mississippi State, and at Alabama. Like, I think they can win at Ole Miss. I think they can beat LSU at home. Um, I think I've got them a win over Texas A&M. Like, I know that that sounds crazy, but there's always some interesting game where Jimbo kind of blows it, right? And this seems like one of those spots where, you know, it, it, how about this? Is 7-5 and five good enough? Is 7-5 and five a good enough record with a schedule like this that the boosters will get off Harson's back and let him operate this thing the way that he wants to? And I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.